ice. One of nature's most formidable barriers, science. But the aging wind-class icebreakers with their space-consuming deck guns were better suited for war than scientific exploration. In the late 1960s, partially due to the changing mission and partially due to superior Soviet ships, the U.S. began research on a new class of icebreaker, the Polar Class. The Polar Class, the Polar Sea and the Polar Star, which were uh, built in the uh, mid-70s, were a substantial uh, performance improvement over the wind class, predominantly because of the much larger size and a much greater horsepower. The Polar Class is able to run in two power ranges. The economically efficient diesel electric mode can produce a total of 18,000 horsepower. But if necessary, the captain can employ the gas turbines, able to create 75,000 horsepower. These engines are so forceful, they can only be used for short bursts. The 399-foot polar vessels became the most capable breakers in the U.S. fleet. By comparison, usually in McMurdo Base down in Antarctica, to break through the ice to take the supply ships in, you have uh, 150, maybe 300 miles of ice to break. The old wind class used to take them two to three weeks. The last I heard, the record was by the polar class was 17 hours. I mean, when they go to break, they break. Other advancements were also included in the polar ships. Their bows extend far out over the water. This transfers additional weight onto the ice. While at the back of the ship, the propellers were built so their pitch could be controlled. What the controllable pitch propellers allows you to do is to continually rotate the, the shaft in the same direction and yet change your thrust from a head thrust to a stern thrust by changing the pitch on the propeller blades. This advantage allows the ship to change direction without first stopping, then reversing the engines. But even the new ships had room for improvements. Having been designed as both science ships and military supply vessels, sacrifices have been made to accommodate both roles. The Coast Guard realized that the ships had some shortcomings with regard to laboratory space and over-the-side uh, equipment such as uh, oceanographic winches. So in the 80s, we designed a number of very significant ship alterations to the Polar class, which added uh, a much more robust scientific capability. The end of the Cold War saw an almost complete change in the U.S. icebreaker fleet. They were more than just ships that could break ice. They had become high-latitude research vessels.